Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Let me know if you could see me and hear me. Because the, um... Oh, it's a join now. I need to change my my uh, restream tweet because that's restream IO that tweets that whole uh, join now thing. How are you guys doing? Wow, we've got so many people in here. Hi, hello everybody. Hello. How are you guys doing? I just woke up not too long ago. Made breakfast for the fam. Had me a bowl of thorough. What you guys have for breakfast? I'm having stuff on my shirt. I don't know if I do. Love this channel. Thanks for coming through. What's up, booger butt? <laughs> That's such a cute, like, thing to say. What's up, booger butt? Not much, booger butt. How are you? Shout out to the folks that are checking out on Twitch. <clears throat> I'm still trying to get my screen sit up hi 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 i'm sleepy yeah me too when is the next day karampa i would just i would just say in the future <clears throat> when exactly i'm not exactly sure but in the future hello alexandri oh that's a long name babe hey jay for the win just the worst unicorn hi how are you guys doing we're all booger butts here <laughs> that's so cute let's all be booger butts I eat gummies because I don't really eat. My vitamins are gummies. I had a homemade McMuffin. Oh, that sounds like it would be yummy. Homemade McMuffins are delicious. Well, early stream today, right? Yeah, hey, Doc. And right after this, I have to go back to editing. I'm editing a new bit life for today. Corona Cashin has everyone streaming early, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Banana in a jar, what? Is that, oh, that's what you had? Banana in a jar? What is, what is that? My chat is coming in spurts and it's really, <laughs> that's because a lot of people are on. Shout out to everybody that's here. I'm excited. We've got three minutes or two minutes and then I can make this maximized. I'm excited. It's like, it's fun to do this with you guys because honestly, me and my husband were talking and I was like, I don't really know what new things they could possibly come up with. There were a couple of things that I do I am looking forward to and we kind of talked about it but let me what are things that you guys are excited to see in the stream let me know in um playstation stream hey mimi i think all the mods are here is everybody here duck lizzie mimi shout out to you guys um oh cameron how have you been it's been a long time babe bit life <laughs> getting out of jail i know i was so excited when i got out of jail bro in bit life not in real life i never got caught um, since when was there a PS5? What do you mean? Where have you been? What do you mean since when? Booger Boomer. <laughs> That's so cute. Hello. Oh, Detroit Become Human sequel. That would be good. I know, I know as soon as you put that, I'm like, I need to finish the game. All right. I will do one stream where I finish the game. I promise. For Joe Mom. Okay, Duck. All right. Go, go back to sleep, Duck. <laughs> duck, go back to sleep. Spider-Man 2, that's that's good. I'm excited for Spider-Man 2. I also need to finish Spider-Man. I need to have a finish. That Maybe that's what Friday should be, finish Fridays, where I finish a game. I don't keep up with the stuff and no one tells me anything. <laughs> well, that's why you gotta Google. Okay, it'll begin shortly. I wanna press maximize. I wish I had that option. Oh, you were kidding? What up, Christine? Hey. Say my name, say my name. I'm just excited they make the, oh, the next Grand Theft Auto and Spider-Man. That's true. I, I am looking forward to the next um, GTA. It's good, yes. I will finish the game. DDLC? What? Do you mean Doki Doki? Because Doki Doki, um, I played Doki Doki. What are you talking about? Okay, for some reason it's not, uh, here, uh, slow mode has been enabled again. I don't know why it's, uh, it doesn't default and keep that. Uh, that's another thing I need to write down. Hey, Tainga. Of Super Wario 3D World. 
Oh, like the old one. I don't have a Wii U anymore. Is that one? I don't think that one's on the Switch, is it? I'm trying to get. Oh, my goodness. I had like, oh, I'll just write stuff down in. Oh, oh, it's counting down. This is so exciting. Let me know if it's too loud. How does everything sound? Do you miss Don't Hug Me, I scared. I'm Scared? No, I do not miss that. That ish freaked me out. Oh, oh, guys, guys. Uh, I'm so excited. I got a pen. Like, look at this pen. This pen is so cute. I love the glittery. Oh, I love it. Got it on Amazon. That's what I got it on. I can't remember what I typed in the search, though. But I'm writing down. I want to write down some things. Thanks for friending me. PS5, right? That's the thing. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm going to get me one. Well, I'm going to get me one and I got to get my husband one because there's two of us and I play for the channel. He plays for himself, you know. Yes, yeah, far more manageable in slow mode. I don't, I don't know why it doesn't automatically. Okay. It needs to auto slow mode. Just writing something. All right. Any Xbox players? <laughs> Xbox players don't unite. Team Salvato who made Doki Doki said there'll be a new game very soon and it's not related to deal. Oh, okay. Okay. I wonder if um, the theory on that was right. Let me know if I'm talking too loud because I have it pretty loud in my ears. The music is like, this music is loud. Oh my goodness. Are you guys ready? Let's do it together. 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's exciting to do this with you guys. I wasn't this excited when I was thinking about doing this. Okay. Unfortunately, we had to cancel the, the talk that we had uh, planned for GDC. Um, oh, okay. We do have the in person one. Some super exciting news about the PS5. Okay. Uh, and who better to bring that to you? Mm -hmm. One and only Mark Cerny. Without further ado, over to you, Mark. Okay. Yeah, when he first started, I was like, he sounded very, very sad. I was kind of nervous about what, whatever was going to happen. Lots of chances later on this year to make the PlayStation 5 games. Okay. Today, I want to talk a bit about our goals for the PlayStation 5 hardware. I want to turn this up. Development of the console. So it's hardware we're talking about today. I'm a big believer in console generations. Once every five I hope we see it. Seven years, a console arrives with substantially new capabilities. There's a lot of learning by the game developers, hopefully mm -hmm. not too overwhelming. Makes soon sense. Soon there's games that could never have been created before. Makes sense. Now, it used to be that as a console designer, you'd somehow intuit what would be the best set of capabilities for the new console, and okay. then build it in complete secrecy. For the PlayStation consoles, that period lasted through PlayStation 3. A powerful I look at him and I see an eye doctor. Is that, is that weird to say? <laughs> I see an eye doctor. We can't hear? What, you can't hear the so, thing? Okay, let me turn it up. I'm going to turn it up. The first of these is listening to the developers, which is to say that a lot of what we put into a console about now? derives directly from the needs and aspirations of the game creators. We definitely do have some ideas of our own, but at the core of our philosophy for designing consoles That's better, is that okay. game players are here for the fantastic games, which is to say that game creators matter. Anything we can do to matter. make life easier for the game creators or help them realize their dreams, we will do. Mm -hmm. So about once every two years, I take a tour of the industry. I go to the various okay. developers and publishers, sit down, and discuss how they're doing with the current consoles and what they'd like. Yeah, to he see talks very soft. Consoles. The music was this way louder than this was. Weeks on the road as reaching the bulk of the game creators involves talking to well over 100 people at something like two dozen publishers and developers. And it oh, is okay. incredibly valuable. By the way, the feature most requested by the developers, that was an SSD, which we were very SSD. happy to okay. put in the hardware, but the hardware. a lot of problem solving. Have required. you watched Glee? Yes. I'll be doing a deep dive on the SSD and surrounding. Let me know if you guys need me to turn it up anymore. Time. It's also key to make a generational leap while keeping the console sufficiently familiar to game developers. True. And think about this in terms of balancing evolution and revolution. 
Now, with PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, the target was a revolution each time with a brand new feature set. Mm -hmm. That was great in many ways, but yeah. time for the developers to get up and running got longer with each console. Oh, in the past, makes sense. I've called this time If your leaps are so large, it, it's hard Here's for them to I catch up. For those three consoles. To be clear, I'm not talking about time to make a game. Developers will be ambitious, and it may take them six years or so to realize their vision. Mm. What I'm talking about is that dead time before graphics and other aspects of game development are up and running, <coughs> and trying to minimize that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if we're trying to reduce that dead time to zero, that means the hardware architecture can't change at all. We're handcuffed. We need to judge for each feature what value it adds and mm -hmm. whether it's worth the increase in developer time needed to support it. Oh, turn it up more? Okay, I'll so turn it up more. So with PlayStation 4, we were able to strike a pretty good balance between performance and familiarity. We got required learning back to PlayStation 1 levels. With PS5, the GPU was that? definitely the area we felt the most tension. The audience though, right? They do kind of look like they're not really there, <laughs> but they are. Model. Ultimately, I think we've ended up with something under a month of getting up to speed. That feels like we're striking about the right balance. I'll go into a bit more detail later today about our philosophy with the GPU and the specific feature set that resulted from it. Is the audio better? It's also very important for us, as the hardware team, to find new dreams, by which I mean something other than CPU performance, GPU performance, and the amount of RAM. Mm. The increase in graphics performance over the past two decades has been astonishing, but there are other areas in which we can innovate and provide significant value to the game creators, and okay. through them, the players. That's why the SSD was very much on our list of directions to explore, regardless of what came out of the conversations with game developers and publishers. Mm. The biggest feature in this category Thanks is the custom through. engine for audio. That's today's final topic. The push okay. for Thanks vastly so. improved audio, and in particular, 3D audio, isn't something that came out of the developer meetings. It's much more the case that we had a dream of what might be possible five years from now, and okay. then worked out a number of steps we could take to set us on that path. So here again are the three principles. The first yeah. being enabling the desires of developers to drive the hardware. It seems system. that this system is very developer to focused. To me, the which SSD is, really is, is the key to the next generation. It's a, a game changer. And it was the number one ask from developers for PlayStation 5. As in, we know it's probably impossible, but can you put an SSD in it? Mm. That was a discussion we were also having internally. It was clear that the presence of a hard drive in every PlayStation 4 was having a positive impact. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that would simply have been impossible at Blu-ray disc speeds were now possible. At the same time, though, in 2015, His voice, though, right? it's when we were having these conversations, <laughs> I just feel were already banging. I feel like a te he's like a teacher or something, you know? A lot you know? of developer time was being spent designing around slow load speeds. I want to focus in on just one number here, which is how long it takes to load a gigabyte of data from a hard drive. The difficulty being that hard drives are neither particularly fast nor flexible. Okay. If all your data is in one block, which is frankly not very likely, you can load they 50 they're to 100 way too still a second, like depending the on how the data is located <laughs> on the hard drive. Why are you guys Let's just talking about the, the audience? Edge, which means loading a gigabyte takes 10 seconds. If you compress your game packages, you can fit more data on the Blu-ray disc and also effectively wow. boost your hard drive read speed by the compression ratio. We support Zlib decompression on PlayStation 4 that gets you something like 50% more data on the disc and 50% higher effective read speed. Oh, Unfortunately, shout out though, to it's highly likely that your data is scattered around in various files on the hard drive. Something as happened, well as I don't know what happened. Oh, I'm getting hosted. Within those shout files. out to Andy for so the host. Thank you so much. Lots of are needed at 2 to 50-ish milliseconds each. My rule of thumb is that he the hard be the drive is two thirds of its time speaking, and only a third of its time actually. <laughs> I don't know if I should be watching this. Putting all of that together, a gigabyte <laughs> That's is too much very math for me, man. Twenty seconds are to so load bad. from a hard drive. Now, oh a gigabyte is not. Y'all aren't in school, right? So we're in school right now. Six gigabytes of RAM on PlayStation <laughs> Four, so boot times and load times can get pretty grim. Or to put that differently. As a player, you wait for the game to boot, mm -hmm. wait for the game to load, yes. wait for the level to reload every yes. time you die, yes. and you wait for what is euphemistically called fast travel. Mm -hmm. And all of that leads to the dream. What if we could have not just an SSD, but a blindingly fast SSD? Instantaneous? If we could load five gigabytes a second from it, what would change? 
Now, SSDs are completely different from hard drives. They don't have seeks as such. If you have a five gigabyte a second SSD, you can read data from a thousand different locations in that second, pretty much oh, at wow. speed. As for time to load a gigabyte, this is next gen we're talking about. Can so you imagine really loading a game Instead, and it just like starting? How long to load two gigabytes? And the answer is about a quarter of a second. Do you guys second. still hear it? I mean, that's Someone amazing. says they don't we're hear anything. talking two orders of magnitude, meaning very roughly 100 times faster. Which means at five gigabytes a second for the SSD, the potential is that the game boots in a second. Okay. There are no load screens. The game just fades down. While no load a screens? Half gigabytes and fades back up again. Same for a reload. You're immediately what? back. I got to write this down. Are y'all writing? Take notes. Take and notes. Fast travel becomes so fast, it's blink and you miss it. As game creators, we go from trying to distract the player from That's how long the fast dreams. travel is Remember, taking, these are dreams. Like those we don't know what they can really do. Rides, to being so okay, so the person who says they can't hear you, uh, restart your stream. Transition down. Pretty cool, right? But for me, this is not the primary reason to change from a hard drive to an SSD. The primary reason for an ultra-fast SSD is that it gives the game designer freedom. Or to put that differently, with the yeah, hard drive, yeah, it seems drive, like they keep the saying developers, developers, developers. Is the audience <laughs> even real? The game that the developer <laughs> is trying okay, to Quincy, calm down. I think so. Almost <laughs> all of us in the room have experienced. I don't this. think Maybe they're going to start with that, bro. They're going to. It's going to be later. They're going to do it later. We have two rich environments where we each want enough textures and models to fill memory, which you can do as long as you have a long staircase or elevator ride or a windy corridor where you can ditch the old assets. You're too cool for school. And then take thirty seconds or so to load the new assets. Yeah, this, they just started this, their stream. Having a 30 second elevator ride is a total experience. Looks More realistically, we'd probably <laughs> chop the world into I couldn't sit in class with y'all. I would get in trouble from laughing. You guys are bad. lines and run speeds like we did for Haven City when we were making Jack 2. The game is 20 years old, but not much has changed since then. Okay. All those twisty passages are there for a reason. There's a whole subset of level design dedicated to this sort of work, but still, it's a giant distraction for a My team. My poor brain, just wants <laughs> because of the math. Game. I know. He so did say a I lot of numbers. The dream of an SSD, part of the reason for that five gigabyte a second target was to eliminate loads, but also part of the reason for that target was streaming. As in, what if the SSD is so the fast? Don't even clap. Yeah, when it's the, the press people, they don't really back, clap. It's possible to load one moves you if you figure that it takes half a second to turn, <laughs> that's like, four oh, they're real. One move. Data you can load. <laughs> that sounds about so right. Like the cardboard cutout anyway, diversity. Back to the hard drive. They Another strategy for increasing effective cut read cut speed is to make big sequential chunks of data. For example, guys, we might I'm missing what he's saying. All the data okay? together for each city block. That removes <laughs> most of the seeks, <laughs> and the streaming gets faster. But there's a downside too, which is that frequently used data is included in many chunks and therefore is on the hard drive many, many times. Mm -hmm. Marvel Spider-Man uses this strategy, and though it works very well for increasing the streaming speed, there's a massive duplication as a result. Some of the objects, like mailboxes or news racks, are on the hard drive 400 times. Oh yeah, there's a lot of what I'm describing here are in, things that, that cramp a creative director's style. Either level design gets a little bit boring in places, or okay. the data is duplicated so many times that it no longer fits on the Blu-ray disc. Mm -hmm. And you end up with hard limits on the player's run speed or driving speed. The player can't go faster than the load speed from the hard drive. Mm. And finally, I'm sure many of you have noticed that after a patch download, the PlayStation 4 will sometimes take a long time to install the patch. Yes, oh, forever That's because sometimes. part of a file has been changed. The new data can be downloaded pretty quickly. But mm -hmm. before the game boots up, a brand new file has to be constructed that includes the yeah, changed portion. Those like Otherwise, copying. every change would add a seek or two. All same Even same so, you can decision every single see what's time. happening on game titles. They start. I wonder what new games, games, right? Yeah, I'm excited to see if they talk about with games. But they, he said that they may no not. Sense. They're so just mostly no talking about the hard drive in this one. With the changes incorporated. Wait, that's a real audience. I thought that was some no stuff on the screen. <laughs> those are real people. There's yet one more benefit, which is that system memory can be used much more efficiently. I would laugh if on they PlayStation got up. On PlayStation 4, the game data on the hard drive feels very distant and difficult to use. By the time you realize you need a piece of data, it's much too late to go out and load it. So mm -hmm. system memory has to contain all of the data that could be used in the next 30 seconds or so of gameplay. That means a lot of the eight gigabytes of system memory is idle. It's just waiting there to be potentially used. 
Okay. On PlayStation 5, though, the SSD is very close to being like more RAM. Typically, it's fast. This seems like it's more like a dev um, you can just presentation. Load it the like, SSD this is more stuff that's There's no need to have lots of more important to devs than it is to us. To just saying, hey, it'll load faster, it'll be instantaneous. That works for us. All that is that most of the RAM is, is working for more detailed on the people. Behalf. This is one of the reasons that 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 feels right for PlayStation 5. The presence of the SSD reduces the need for a massive intergenerational increase in size. Low latency, so bandwidth access. Back to the That's dream good. of the SSD. Here's the set of targets. Okay. Boot the game in a second. Ultra fast. No mode. load screens. Design that freedom, meaning no twisty high speed or streaming long corridors. More game on the disc and more game on the SSD. And finally. Those patch installs go away. The reality no is long that patch the installs? SSD is what? just one piece of the puzzle. There's a lot of places where bottlenecks can occur in between the SSD and the game code that uses the data. You can see this on PlayStation 4. If I use an SSD with 10 times the speed of a standard hard drive, I probably see only double the loading speed, if that. Mm. For PlayStation 5, our goal was the not just the that the SSD itself be <laughs> Can we make our faster. own avatars? It was that That's a, that is a good question because I hate what I am stuck with because so the whole every Facebook single issue that happened on there. needed to be addressed. My fake and there are a lot the, of them. They fake people since the virus. Check -in. What Those are real people. You guys. Conceptually, check-in is a pretty simple process. Data is loaded into system memory from the hard drive or SSD. It's they look like they're moving if you look closely. to check it in, <laughs> and then it's moved to its final location. At the SSD speeds we're talking about, that last part, moving the data, meaning copying it from one location to another, hmm. takes roughly an entire next-gen CPU core. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If all the overheads get 100 times larger, that will cripple the frame rate as soon as the player moves, and that massive stream of data starts coming off the SSD. So to solve all of that, we built a lot of custom hardware, namely a custom flash controller and a number okay. of custom units in our main chip. The flash controller in the SSD was designed for smooth and bottleneck-free operation, but also with games in mind. For example, there are no six levels of priority when reading it, from This is the um, Sony is presentation. You can imagine the player for the heading into some file. new location in the world and the game requesting a, a few gigabytes of textures. And while those textures are being loaded, an enemy is shot and has to speak a few dying words. Having multiple priority levels lets the audio for those dying words get loaded immediately. Okay. On one side, <coughs> that flash controller connects to the actual flash dies that supply the storage. To mm -hmm. reach our bandwidth target of five gigabytes a second, we ended up with a 12-channel interface. Eight channels wouldn't be enough. Okay. The resulting bandwidth we've achieved is actually five and a half gigabytes. The smiles are fake. He's With a robot 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 calling it now. He's not a robot. The natural size that emerges for an SSD is eight hundred. Probably streaming from his bedroom. Gigabytes. That's why. The key <laughs> question for us was: <laughs> Is that enough? I mean, it's tempting to add more, but Flash certainly doesn't. Come Mind you, if this man had this room in his house, he's got a freaking big house. I'd like to visit the house. Regards to what we put in the no, that's not a map. That was like Ultimately, um, we resolved this question by explaining the stuff in the SSD. A broad range of gamers. We examined the specific games that they were playing over the course of a weekend or a week or a month, and whether that set oh, I guess of the SSD games map would then. fit properly on the SSD. Always we were able classroom. to establish that the friction caused by reinstalled or Does new downloads. Does anyone feel like, like he's talking to himself? And so we locked in himself. on that 825 <laughs> gigabyte size while also preparing multiple oh strategies gosh. so that those who want oh more storage gosh. can add it. I'll go through the details in a moment. <laughs> Back to the flash controller. On the other side, it connects to our main custom chip via four lanes of Gen 4 PCIe. And inside the main custom chip is a pretty hefty unit He's not dedicated even sweating. to I.O. <laughs> Before we talk yeah, about I'm, that, I'm excited. Class, no more loading screens? For a the GTA I takes 20 years to load. Zealand Bloodborne was five days. Okay. We decided to use it again on PlayStation 5, but on my 2017 tour of developers, I learned about a new format called Kraken from Rad Game Tools. Okay. It's like Zlib's smarter cousin. Simple, uh, similar types of algorithms, but about 10% uh, I see that guy scratching his face. Is that guy? Big. That means 10% right. more game My on pen the down again. Ray disc or on the SSD. Kraken had only been out for a year, but it was already becoming a de facto industry standard. Half of the teams I talked to were either using it or getting ready to evaluate it. 
So we hustled and built a custom decompressor into the I.O. unit, one capable of handling over five gigabytes of Kraken format input data a second. Mm. After decompression, <coughs> that typically becomes eight or nine gigabytes. But the unit itself is capable of outputting as much as 22 gigabytes a second if the data happened to compress particularly well. Okay. By the way, in terms of performance, that custom decompressor equates to nine of our Zen 2 cores. That's what it would take. They to are real. They the are real. The conventional. <laughs> what are you not getting that There's these people are real? There's a lot more than the custom I.O. unit, including a dedicated Oh crap, they are all robots, aren't they? The no, exactly it's not cardboard people. They are real people. The SSD. This equates to another Zen 2 core or two in terms oh, of its PS5 launch performance. With the crappiest memory hard drive like what the PS3 model. and PS4 did when they There's launched. There's two dedicated I.O. coprocessors and a large I mean, pool. I'm sure These there's going to be issues when they they're, first launch because that happens with every console. Every, every single console has around. issues when they first launch. And like their targets, like Nintendo had targets that didn't reach until after some time started. But I don't think it's going to be really crappy. I don't know about instantaneous. We're going to have to see what that looks like. The for memory mapping, which I know doesn't sound like anything related to the SSD, but a lot of developers map. But he's careful with his words. He's saying target, not this is what will happen. He said dreams, and he said targets. He didn't say, hey, this will be the happen. So their goal, and I think it's generational. Their goal through this generation of PS5 is going to be no load screens. It might not launch with no event, load screens. Is an unattractive option. It could really hurt the. Oh, this compares to Xbox. So we've implemented a gentle. I think it's still going to be better. Where the coherency engines inform the GPU of oh, the overwritten stuff, yeah. address ranges, and custom scrubbers in several dozen GPU caches do pinpoint evictions of just those address ranges. The best thing is, as a game developer, when you read from the SSD, you don't need to know any of this. You don't even need to know that your data is compressed. You just indicate what data you'd like <coughs> to read from your original uncompressed file. Oh, Vio, Vio. isn't like that Sony Vio, like his uh, laptop? Let me point it right over there. That's a Sony Vio, right? And at very high speed. I'd say he practiced his speech at least 87 times. Yeah, I'm sure that they practiced these things a whole bunch of times. Really they attached the body parts to them. Like That's how they can move. <laughs> what, on ca a cardboard cutouts? Do you no plan on getting the PS5? Yeah, I do. Streaming to become Anyone only getting only gray hair? <laughs> Having said that, <laughs> expandability of our SSD is going to be quite important. Flash is costly, and you may very well want to add storage to whatever we put in the console. Due to teraflops. Now, Can you explain teraflops to me? Because that word, first off, I, that word, use it. teraflop, I really, that word, could, could there not have been a better word? Like to take of backwards compatibility he talks to like when I need to read a 1,000 a large <laughs> external hard drive say. is ideal. You can leave your games on the hard drive and Those play them directly from there, thus saving the pricier SSD storage. Yeah, it is a bit wordy. Title, or you can copy your active PlayStation 4 titles to the SSD. If your purpose in adding more storage is to play PlayStation 5 titles, though, ideally you would add to your SSD storage. We will be supporting certain M2 it's SSDs. Yes, hi, These it's are me. internal drives that you can he's get on the open me. market. He's killing me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry he's killing I know that there's a lot of words five. that he's saying. As for which ones we support and when, I'll get to that in a moment. They oh. connect through the custom I.O. unit, just like our SSD does. So they can take full advantage get of the Get in the kitchen if you can't stop. Co uh, ninja, I don't know what kind of stream you think this is. Side. You could go to his stream where Here's you don't hear me talk though. at all. That's that where you can go. That commercial drive okay. has to be at least as fast as ours. Talk about going the kitchen. The speed of our SSD bye bye. need to work flawlessly with any M2 drive. When I gave the yeah. Wired interview last year, I said that the PlayStation 5 <laughs> SSD was faster than anything available on PC. At the time, commercial M2 drives used PCIe 3.0, and sure four looks lanes not of that good capped today. out at Oh my gosh, she does not look like Ed Sheeran. Don't you dare dis Ed Sheeran no like that. PCIe 3.0 drive can Because if his teens and children that. understand what he's saying, M2 when really we're just PCIe here to see the PS5. I think that's with like a lot of people, our, you know? Uh, a lot of people just wanted to see, like the meat and potatoes, like Duchess is saying. They want to see end, what does it look like, drive, what can it do. I think he went too much into like their SSD. dreams of what they Having wanted to that, do in the past, what it used to do, Apple's and then what their goals because are. That commercial M2 drive will have its own architecture, its own flash controller, and so on. For example, the NVMe specification lays out a priority scheme for requests that the M2 drives can use. That guy's got an itchy face, the one that keeps nice, scratching behind me. But it only has two 
true priority he, levels. The guy's talking Our drugs too much. Support six. Yeah, that was on that was on up Twitch. With only two priority <clears throat> levels, definitely. But our custom IO unit has to arbitrate the extra priority. The audience is not pictures. Than, than bullet points, control. right? I agree. So RB bullet points is what extra speed would have been care of better. Issues arising from the different approach. That commercial drive also needs to physically fit inside of the bay we created in PlayStation 5 for M2 drives. Okay. Unlike internal hard drives, <coughs> there's unfortunately no standard for the 20% height of an people M2 making drive. through this and without some sleeping. M2 drives Goodness. Have giant heat sinks. In fact, some of them even have their own fans. Audience are holograms. That's a lot right of money now pay we're getting to M2 make holograms. And I'm leaving. Bye. Thanks for coming through. through. When games hit beta as they get ready for the PlayStation 5 launch at year end, we'll also be doing some compatibility testing to make sure that the architecture of particular M2 drives isn't too foreign for the games to handle. Makes sense. Once we've done that compatibility testing, we should be able to start letting you know which drives will physically fit and which drive samples have benchmarked appropriately high. Oh, shout out to Jazz for hosting me on Twitch. Thank you so much, Jazz Wolf. It by launch, but it's likely to be a, a bit past it. So please hold off on getting that M2 drive until you hear from us. Okay, back to our principles. Balancing evolution and revolution is the okay, second. Okay, it's around the this second. This was definitely uh, a recurring theme with the GPU. Theme. <coughs> we need new My GPU brain is going to blow up. If, Help me. I'm if we only so have sorry. more performance, it's not really a new generation of consoles. I'm so sorry. Of course, many I feel like we're passing notes in class. In more All I hear is gibberish. Part no, of no. PlayStation 5 teraflop is more powerful than a PlayStation 4 teraflop. But we aren't just looking for the performance. We also need the ability to do something with that the GPU teraflop. that could not have been done before. I'll hear that and voice in my nightmare. <laughs> this Every voice time isn't we that double bad. the performance of some <laughs> GPU component, we don't want to find out we've doubled the power consumed. I wonder how many memes are going to be out about his But at the same voice. time, we have to make sure the GPU can run PS4 games. Mm -hmm. And we have to ensure that the architecture is easy for the developers to adopt. Now, is it better than the Xbox Series X? Handled masterfully by AMD. I guess we'll they find out. It as a key <coughs> need throughout the design process. As our solution to adding new features without blindsiding developers, we made sure that if there were new significant features, it would be optional to use them. The GPU hmm. supports ray tracing, but you don't have to use ray tracing to make your game. The GPU supports okay. primitive shaders, but you can release your first game on PlayStation 5 without making any use of them. So they're Before allowing their capabilities the some GPU, things to be flexible like for game developers that are making that games for the, the system. First, we have a custom AMD GPU based on their RDNA 2 technology. What does that mean? AMD is continuously improving and revising their tech. For RDNA All the 2, their goals time. were, roughly speaking, to not a single stutter. Dude's a pro. He is. Because I'm not going to lie. I would have been fumbling. I'd be like, uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. And to He's really good. More advanced feature set. But that feature set I think set the Xbox and the PS5 will be good, but I have no idea which will be better. Our own need that's, a, that's a truth. It's like, how much the better? We've be, they've been because. making leaps so technologically. How much born. better can they be? If we bring concepts to be. AMD that are felt to be widely useful, then they shoulders. can be adopted <laughs> into RDNA 2 and used broadly, including in PC GPUs. If the ideas are sufficiently specific to what we're trying to accomplish, like the GPU cache scrubbers I was talking about, then they end up being just for us. If you see a similar discrete GPU available as a PC card at roughly the same time as we release our console, hmm. that means our collaboration with AMD s succeeded uh, okay. in producing technology useful. Again, he's talking worlds. about targets it and goals. It doesn't mean that we as Sony simply incorporated the PC part. AMD is double teaming. So AMD has no loyalty. They are like, whoever AMD needs our stuff will get our stuff. To rely on terrifying and I mean, is an absolute indicator of performance. It's either and them or, CPU you know, should be avoided somebody well. else. You might as well In use them. In the case them, of right? CPUs, we all understand this. The PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 each have eight CPUs, but we never think that meant the capabilities and performance are equal. It's the same for CUs. For one thing, they've been getting much larger over time. Adding new features means adding lots of transistors. In fact, uh, the transistor count for a PlayStation 5 CU is 62% larger This feels larger like a lecture. Uh, yeah, it does. This is school all over CU. again. <laughs> Second, the PlayStation 5 GPU Just get on with it. I know, I know. I'm going to go get breakfast. <laughs> Make memes and stuff. All right, see you later. 
is to put the previous. I have the right to write down notes, right? Mm. Console, <laughs> like book. we did with some uh, PlayStation book. 3s. But that's, of course, extremely expensive. I can see how his a face kind of looks like Matt Pat. Like the any certain definition in the, and the nose and I think into the, mouth. the new console's custom chips. Meaning that even as the technology evolves, the logic and feature set that PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro titles rely on is still available in backwards compatibility modes. One advantage of this strategy is that once backwards compatibility is in the console, it's in. It's not okay, as if a cost good. down will remove backwards compatibility like it did on PlayStation 3. Achieving this okay. unification of functionality took years of efforts by AMD, as any roadmap advancement creates a potential divergence in logic. Running PS4 and he PS4 could have simplified that by saying it's backwards compatible and it'll stay that way. The boost is truly <laughs> yeah, it's backwards this compatible. Around, and some it's game code just can't handle it. ASMR. Oh, his voice. On a title, ASMR. On a title basis. Results are excellent. Though. Is he on a green we screen? We recently took a look at the top hundred PlayStation mm, he 4 could titles be. As ranked by playtime, and we're expecting almost all of them to be playable at launch on PlayStation 5. With regards to new features, as I said, our strategy was to try to break new ground, but at the same time not to require use of the new Draining. GPU capabilities. For more than a decade, GPUs have imposed a restriction Backwards on gaming. Compatibility. Software Bad handles compatibility. virtual <laughs> processing, but for the most part, dedicated hardware is responsible for the triangles and other geometry that the vertices form. I'm shocked. That I'm actually shocked. I hate to be in the audience, to right? I would move a lot. I can just sit such there and just a be like. Processing of a vertex you know, and all geometry that he uses looks like it the wow guy. Screen. I mean, the PlayStation nice guy? 5 has a, a new unit called the geometry a nice, which he looks brings like a nice guy. triangles and other primitives under full programmatic this will control. Remove my as a game developer, you're free to ignore its existence and use the PlayStation 5 GPU as if it were oh no more capable goodness. than the PS4 GPU, or you can use this new intelligence in various ways. Simple usage could be performance optimization, such as removing back-faced or off-screen vertices mm, and triangles. Tummy. More complex. It's going to cost regardless a lot. Yeah. Shaders, which allow the game I, to did they ever mention price points? Does fly, anybody know if they even ever mentioned price points yet? Like not today, obviously not today, but like ever with any information that came out about this. A broad variety of techniques, including smoothly varying. Because they've been kind of hush hush. Addition on of procedural PS5 detail stuff. to close up objects. Series has been right? particle effects and other visual special effects. All day, every day. Another major new feature of our custom right. RDNA. <laughs> I'm not writing you is ray tracing <laughs> using the same strategy as AMD's upcoming PC GPUs. The CUs contain a new specialized unit called the intersection engine, which can okay. calculate the intersection of rays with boxes and triangles. To use the intersection engine, first you build what is called an acceleration structure. It's data in RAM that contains all of your geometry. There's a okay. specific set of formats you can use. They're variations on the same BVH. You should have opened Google Translate then, before the live stream program, starts. What is this a new language? That asks the intersection <laughs> engine to check array against <laughs> <laughs> what is this language? Well, the it's called English. They said it might be four ninety nine, triangle or ray or still three ninety nine. Okay, my guess for the price is five hundred. Yeah, having said that, it, it can't be more than five hundred. I think three ninety nine so is a good it's price. It's a good mix with logic heavy code. There's of course no need to <laughs> I made use her laugh ray tracing. Yes, PS four graphics engines will run just fine on PlayStation five, but it presents an opportunity for those interested. Okay, so I'm thinking audio. it'll take less than Google a million rays a second to have a big impact on audio. Tracing. That should be enough for audio occlusion and some reverb calculations. Okay. With a bit more of the GPU invested in ray tracing, is that my math teacher? To do some very nice. The PS4 was um, having said that, adding 499, and then it went down to 399. It started at 499. Could easily take hundreds of millions. Have we of seen the console yet? No. And full ray tracing. I think I fell asleep. How far can we go? I'm starting to get quite bullish. I've already seen a PlayStation 5 title that's successfully using ray tracing based Pass this in Pass complex this animated <laughs> scenes with only modest costs. Another set of issues for the GPU involve size and frequency. How big do we make the GPU and what frequency do we run it at? Mm. This is a balancing act. The chip has a cost and there's a cost for whatever we use to supply that chip with mm -hmm. power and to cool it. Is that his In cue general, for saying it's going like to be more expensive? The GPU at higher system? frequency. Let me show you Then past ones? Here's two possible this configurations. Dude, Bob Ross, the combination of Matt, Pat, and Siri. Uh, yes, I think that's a this great a description. description. Don't take these configurations too seriously. Because he, Bob Ross talks in a special voice, which I freaking love Bob Ross, number. okay? 
But, but with actually, Matt Pat and Siri, I, that's all. That's him. Because that is him. Is defined as the I don't remember taking a college campaign. math course. That's just one part of the GPU. There are a lot of other units. <laughs> I would die if someone just got up and punched him. Hopefully not. He doesn't seem like he's a bad guy. At 33% higher frequency, rasterization goes 33% faster. Processing the command buffer goes that much faster. The L2 and uh, other caches have that much higher bandwidth, and so on. About the only downside is that system memory is 33% further away in terms of cycles. Mm -hmm. But the large number of benefits more than counterbalance that. As okay. a friend of mine says, a rising tide lifts all boats. Also, it's easier who's, to fully use 36 uh, that thing has been around for a very, CDs. very long time. When triangles are small, it's is much harder talking? to fill no, all I think he's going to talk with useful the, work. The whole of this thing. So there's a lot to be said for faster. Z's in the to chat. handle the resulting power and heat issues, which frankly, we haven't the always done like the best like job. No. Part of the reason for that is, <laughs> historically, our process for setting CPU and GPU frequencies has relied on some heavy-duty guesswork with regards to how much electrical power games will consume and how much heat will be produced as a result inside of the console. That's power a true thing, man, because like, PS3 games. runs when a lot hotter than God the PS4. On my PS4 Pro, I know the but power man. consumption is high just by the fan noise. But power isn't simply about engine quality. It's about the minutiae of what's being displayed. Like if you're playing right here in my desk and I've got the green screen, it's a lot of heat being produced right here. Consumes less power than processing simple geometry, which is sounds like he's explaining my love life. What? With its it's low triangle count makes my PS4 Pro heat up so much. <laughs> Things are getting hot for your love life. A process on previous consoles has been to try to guess what the maximum power consumption during the entire console lifetime might be, which is to say the worst case scene in the worst case game okay. and prepare a cooling solution that we think will be quiet at that power level. All right. If we get it right, fan noise is minimal. If we get oh, it wrong, fan noise, the console that's another will be thing quite too. loud for the higher power games. And there's even a chance that it might overheat and shut down if we misestimate power too badly. Please don't misestimate. PlayStation 5 is especially challenging because the CPU supports 256-bit native instructions okay. that consume a lot of power. All right. These are great here and there, but presumably only minimally used. Mm. Or are they? If we plan for major 256-bit instruction usage, mm -hmm. we need to set the CPU clock substantially lower mm. or noticeably increase the size of the power supply. I do want to hear what the cooling is going to be. So after that is much something discussion, that actually we decided to go me. with a very different direction. This guy's breathtaking. <laughs> Takes we your built breath away. a GPU with 36 CUs. Mind you, our DNA 2 CUs are large. Each has 62% more transistors than the CUs we were using on PlayStation 4. Okay. So if we compare transistor counts, 36 RDNA 2 CUs equates mm -hmm. to roughly 58 PlayStation 4 CUs. Okay. It is a fairly sizable GPU. Then we went with a variable frequency strategy for PlayStation 5, which is Jesus, to say we continuously run the GPU. My brother walked in and was like, is this politics? <laughs> we supply a generous amount of electrical power and then oh increase goodness. the frequency overheat of the shut down. Yes, CPU okay, not overheat the and blow the <laughs> of the system's cooling system. Right, I do, because I remember PS3 used to do that, where than running at it would just shut shut off because it would overheat. Power vary based on the PS4 work. has gotten a lot better, but that's it's still the fan is still very, very loud. I have it down here, and I can hear it very loud on some recordings. Engineering and um, effective and the heat is still a, a thing to design for that specific power level. In some ways, it becomes a simpler problem because there are no more unknowns. There's no need to guess what power consumption the worst case game might have. As okay. for the details of the cooling solution, we're saving them for our teardown. I, I think you'll be quite math. happy with what the engineering team <laughs> came up with. So. How fast can we run the GPU and CPU with this strategy? The Let's simplest see. approach would be to look at the actual temperature of the silicon die and throttle the frequency on that basis. But okay. that won't work. It fails to create a consistent PlayStation 5 experience. It wouldn't do to right. run a console slower simply because it was in a hot room. So right. rather than look at the actual temperature of the silicon die, we mm -hmm. look at the activities that the GPU and CPU are performing and set the frequencies sense. on that basis, okay. which makes everything deterministic and repeatable. While we're at it, we also use AMD's smart shift technology and send any unused power from the CPU to the GPU so it can squeeze out a few more pixels. 
Okay. Benefits so of this, this strategy are quite large. Running a GPU at 2 gigahertz was looking like an unreachable target with the old fixed frequency strategy. Okay. With this new paradigm, we're, we're able to run way over that. In fact, we have to cap the GPU frequency at 2.23 gigahertz so that we can guarantee that the on-chip logic operates properly. Okay. So I'm going to give him a glass of water. Glass of water. Why is that spreading over here? Teraflops. And we expect Try the GPU to spend has most a of very its time at or close chat, to sorry. that frequency. Oh, no, at Twitch it's okay. We'll, Similarly, we'll let it, running the CPU Twitch will let it be free. On YouTube will be a little bit strategy. more, because, you know. But now we can run it as but high Twitch could as 3.5 gigahertz. In fact, it spends most of its time He has a slobber. Time. What does that mean? That doesn't mean all games will be running at 2.23 gigahertz and 3.5 gigahertz. No, we know it When varies. that worst case game arrives, it will run at a lower clock speed, but not too much lower. To reduce power by 10%, it only takes a couple of percent reduction in frequency, so I'd expect okay. any down clocking to be pretty minor. All things considered, the change to a variable frequency approach will show significant gains for PlayStation gamers. The final so of our three principles down was about finding new dreams. It's important for us on the healing. hardware team to find new ways to expand or deepen gaming, and that's what led us to a focus on 3D audio. As players, we experience the game through the visuals, through audio, and through the feedback we receive from the controller, such yes. as rumble or haptics. Which I love the rumble. I feel a game is just dead rumble. without audio. Visuals of are, course. of course, important, but the yes. impact of audio is huge as well. I agree. The same At thing the same with time, videos. The and audio movies. team on a game project has to do a lot with a little. Audio for can example, really on PlayStation amplify 4, there's something. Fierce competition for the Jaguar CPU. A thousand course. people just audio left PS4. Audio typically ends up getting <laughs> just a fraction of a core. That's not much of a computational resource. I thought staring at a wall was boring. Particularly when you consider that the visuals run at 30 <laughs> or 60 frames a second, but audio processing needs to happen at almost 200 oh times a second. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. So, it's been tough going making forward progress on audio with PlayStation 4, particularly when PlayStation 3 was such a beast when it came to audio. The mm -hmm. SPUs in Cell were almost a perfect device for audio rendering. Simple pipelined algorithms could really take advantage of asynchronous DMA and frequently reached 100% utilization. Siri's not getting her man. Why are you claiming There's them? There's unfortunately nothing comparable on PlayStation 4. Probably the most dramatic progress in the PlayStation 4 generation has been with virtual reality. Oh, the yeah, PSVR hardware has its own audio unit. It supports about 50 mm -hmm. pretty decent 3D sound sources. And this provided a hint as to where we could go with audio, as well as okay. some valuable experience. That's Not a cool thing that one of their older here products are helped goals them for audio guide their future products in a different the way. The first goal was great audio for everyone. So the Not just VR users or sound bar owners or headphone 12, users. That meant CNS audio had to be part of the console. I know it was like a major play in regards to their cooling. The second goal was to support hundreds of sound sources. We didn't want developers to have to pick and choose what sounds would get 3D effects and which wouldn't. We wanted every sound in the game to have dimensionality. Okay. And finally, we wanted to really take on the challenges. Of now, three D sound is that the same thing as like now when we say um, present, spatial, we mean the feeling that you're actually there. You've entered. I know I didn't like. Geometry. It's not of course something we thought we could perfectly <laughs> achieve. But the idea was that if we stopped using just a rain sound and instead used lots of three D audio sources for raindrops hitting the ground at all mm -hmm. sorts of locations around you. Okay, so it's spatial. Point, your it's brain spatial. would take a leap, and you'd begin to have this feeling. This feeling of real presence. I love the that. World like that's when like you can hear this the sound. The you can hear it in front of you or behind you, like game. where the sound, just it, like, like where the raindrops are falling and all that stuff. The College will be better after this. <laughs> it's just better be free after this. That's from. hilarious. To the no, they're gonna, you, behind they're you gonna rob you for college, bro. This can immerse you further in the game, and it can also directly enhance the gameplay. Yeah, it's very immersive. To use Dead Space as an example, I know, old school. You're fighting enemies in fairly dark, that wasn't my spooky thought. locations. <laughs> Back in the day, if you played oh, the game, oh snap! It makes scary games scarier. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Growling and hunting you down. Three D sound can be amazing. It sounds like it. Yeah. Was. With headphones, I like you can tell that the enemy was somewhere on the right. <laughs> how smart does he think we are? <laughs> that must are be bad. somewhere behind. And to Why you guys are bad? But with three D audio with good locality, the idea is you know the enemy is precisely there. And you turn, and you take it out. No, scary games are going to so be next level, bro. How do we know I where can't, sound is I coming can't. from in the first place? Well, 
All those bumps and folds in the ear have a meaning, evolutionarily speaking. Based on what direction the sound is coming from, sound mm -hmm. waves bounce around inside the ear, right. there's some constructive and okay, destructive we're learning, we're learning some and the biology here. is a change in volume. The phase of the sound also shifts, depending on what path the sound wave took to reach the ear canal. These volume changes and phase shifts I think that's such a crazy ingenuity and like, vary it, thing to be able to calculate. Because Head literally it's just coming shift, out the speaker, but to calculate how to put it in so it sounds like it's behind you or beside you or in front of you, it's based crazy. On direction and frequency but in a good way. Coded in a table called the Head Related Transfer Function, or HRTF. Here's part of one. The vertical axis is the frequency. The horizontal axis is the direction. Xbox front, can't front, win right. without games. And, the color and they don't the really have a lot of attenuation of, like of exclusives. Xbox doesn't really have a lot the of exclusives. HRTF is as unique to an individual as a fingerprint is. She's, in fact, she plays zero games, then right. that'll be even worse. Yeah, it Here's will be how we horrible. In HRTF, we've taken hundreds of people through this process. We put a microphone in the subject's left and right ear canals. Okay. And then sit the subject down in the middle of an array of 22 speakers. Oh, okay. We then play an audio sweep from each speaker as we rotate the subject. In the course of 10 or 20 oh, minutes, we're able to sample the HRTF at over 1,000 locations. That's Using crazy! Using HRTF when rendering audio creates unparalleled quality, but it's it computationally so expensive. But I would do it. The simplest way to use an HRTF is to process a sound source to make it appear as if it's coming from one of those thousand locations we sample. Wow. Unfortunately, the processing has to be done in frequency domain rather than time domain, so there's multiple fast Fourier transforms needed for every sound source for every audio tech. This, okay, this is interesting to me. Multiply. This is super interesting This to computational me. complexity this was the determining factor for our strategy. It meant we had to bite the bullet and design and build a custom hardware unit for 3D audio. Collectively, we're referring to the hardware Bite the bullet and make our own thing. algorithms oh, we run on it as Tempest 3D Audio Tech. The meaning of 3D it, okay. audio and technology should be pretty obvious here. Yep. As for Tempest, I feel it really reflects Tempest is our like goals storm. with audio. It suggests a certain intensity of experience mm -hmm. and also hints at your presence within it. We're calling the hardware unit that we built the Tempest Engine. It's based on uh, Tempest. That, that seems to be their word, like we beast. Modified a compute unit Want to heat in such a way without as comments? to make it very close to the SPUs in PlayStation heat 3. Heat in stream Remember when comments? I said that they were what? ideal for audio? So the Tempest engine uh, has so no caches, just like an SPU. All data access is via DMA, just like an SPU. Our target was that it would have Xbox. more power than a CPU. I mean, the pre I get, I get this presentation. His presentation is not be more particularly than um, GPU, thanks to the SPU-like architecture. Uh, the riveting. goal being to make possible near 100% utilization of the CU's vector units. Where we ended up is a unit with roughly the same SIMD power and bandwidth as all mm. eight Jaguar cores in the PlayStation 4 combined. Games are the If we goal. were to use the same algorithm that's true. PSVR, well, at the end of the day, it's more like, like games. Thousand sound sources. But of course, we want to use more complex I wouldn't say it's so we, we it depends on the games. Like if if PlayStation's a little bit under but has it way more games, it's better than Xbox having a little bit more and having no games. Using Dolby Atmos peripherals could have achieved our goals, but we wanted 3D audio for all, not just those with licensed sound bars yeah. or the like. Also, we wanted many hundreds of sound sources, not just the 32 that Atmos supports. And finally, we wanted to be able to throw an overwhelming amount of processing power at the problem. And it wasn't clear what any peripheral might have inside of it. In fact, with the Tempest engine, we've even got enough power that we can I think it's cute they named the it Tempest. To I'm the extent that games want to make use of convolution. Him talking needs to be a horror game. Y'all are bad. Y'all are bad. Or need high bandwidth. But the primary purpose of the Tempest engine remains 3D audio. Now, 3D audio is a major academic research I'm excited topic. about It's safe the to say that no one in the world audio. has all of the answers. And the set of algorithms that has to be invented, tuned, or implemented to realize our vision for 3D audio is immense. For example, use of HRTFs in games is quite complex. Before, I talked about making a sound source. I forgot this was a live stream. It feels like we're back in uh, school. For one of those thousand <laughs> HRTF sounds. He's a mastermind. Yeah, I, this is like for all the, the, if you wanted all the individual other detailed specs the of all the different things they're working on or need to work with, this is what he's more focused on. We have to blend the HRTF data from the closest locations that we have sampled. 
the sound source might be moving, which needs very special handling as that blend keeps All I can imagine is scary games phase with like artifacts in the resulting until audio. dawn or something like that or with the, sound the windigo moving around. It, meaning Ugh. it should feel as if it's coming from an area rather than a single point. Scary. There's also whole categories of approaches to be handled. 3D he audio wrote the fitness phase of test. Individual processing of 3D sound sources. But Until Dawn won't even go there, right? If they play, if I, which I'm not going to do, I'm not going to play Until Dawn after this thing, but any new scary games that, that they come out with are going to be crazy. And finally, there's audio devices. The player might be using headphones or True. speakers. True. Or have a higher True. end surround sound set up with six or more speakers, all of which need different approaches. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of variations. That it's is nice true. to have the computational resources of the Tempest engine, but it's clear that achieving our ultimate goals with 3D audio is going to be a multi-year, step-by-step process. Okay, so he's basically saying, saying at launch it's not going to be as amazing as they want it to be. It's going to take time, this time before it gets uh, to it where they want it to be. It's a place for us to start. With headphones, we control exactly what each ear hears, and therefore the algorithmic development and implementation are more straightforward. Mm -hmm. For TV speakers and, and stereo speakers. Yeah, it's different between headphones to your TV and wireless headsets. Sound. The idea being that if you're sitting in a sweet spot in front of the TV, mm -hmm. then the sound can be made to feel as if it's coming from any direction, even behind you. Virtual surround sound has a lot in common. Without, with okay, without surround sound, but can that be done? It's more complex because the left ear can hear the right speaker. Where it sounds like it's behind you on a regular a TV. Can that be done? The virtual surround sound up and running. We're now looking at increasing the size of that sweet spot, which is to say making the area you need to be in to feel the 3D effect larger. And we're wow. also working to boost the sense of locality. Wow. Headphone audio is the current gold standard for 3D audio on PlayStation 5. But we're going to see what we can do so to bring virtual surround TV sound to I have to test level, this. After which, we'll start in on setups with more speakers. Surround sound is easy. Channel surround, sound. surround sound is easy because the speakers the are physically some of the there. the PlayStation 5 games in development are extensively using these systems. One of the game demos allows you like to toggle between live conventional with, PlayStation 4 and stereo audio degree. and our What's new 3D audio. <laughs> I listened with just an ordinary pair of over-the-ear oh, headphones so and wow. I could feel a difference. 3D audio has that just conventional just feel that to it. Conventional stereo audio feels smashed flat by comparison. The improvement <laughs> is obvious. So a big advancement, but have I entered the matrix? Does my brain believe I'm really there? Okay. Like I was talking about earlier when I explained our target of presence. Right. Well, because that's the whole thing. No. This is all about but targets. You've probably caught on to what's missing here, namely whose HRTF the Cerny was being HRTF. used. Okay. It wasn't mine. It was the default HRTF. The audio team analyzed the hundreds that they measured and chose the one they felt was the closest fit. You know, this to the guy is like he's audience. like those dudes on the crappy school videos the they play HRTF on the projector on the to explain about the problem or safety. Right. You can see that the general features are much the same. But Every 10 seconds he remembers different. he has to smile. It makes a creepy With the face, default you guys HRTF, know. As I said, the 3D audio sounds pretty great. Oh when my I use goodness. my HRTF, though, the audio reaches a, a higher level of realism, which is to say... Oh, yeah, I do. I do have a husband. He's in the living room HRTF, watching this with the baby. I occasionally get fooled and even think a sound is coming from the real <laughs> world and it's actually coming <laughs> from the game. A corollary to this is that there are a few people whose HRTFs are sufficiently far from the default HRTF, that's the red dot here, that they can toggle between PS4 style and PS5 style audio and not sense much difference. I've had a few people describe the PlayStation 5's 3D audio as sounding like a bit better stereo audio. Presumably okay. they're the ones at the very edges of this diagram. Which means what HRTF you're using is key. I'd okay. like everyone to be able to experience what I'm experiencing, but obviously mm -hmm. it's not possible to measure the HRTF of every PlayStation user. That means HRTF selection <coughs> and synthesis are going to be big topics going forward as the Tempest technology matures. Tempest. I At like that. I like the more, word Tempest. We'll be offering a choice Feels like Alexa is taking so over. A, a simple test where He's you trying to make the, the PS5 more, more impressive than it actually is. That's just I, 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 th I think this it's more so just going into a lot of the... Topic. Extra, we, extra, we extra details. A photo of your ear and we we'll kind of just want to know what they're planning to do. And he's kind of going into HRTF a lot of background. Maybe you'll be sending us a video of your ears and your head, and we'll make a 3D model of them and synthesize the HRTF. 
Can Maybe we? you'll play an audio game to tune your HRTF. We'll be subtly changing it as you play and home in on the HRTF that gives you the highest score, meaning that it matches you the best. So they'll do customers. This is a, a journey we'll changes? all be taking together over okay. the next okay. few years. Ultimately, Basically, it's not going to be at launch. It's going to take time before they next level of get realism. to where he's, his target is. Hopefully, I've been able to illustrate a bit about our design and decision-making process today and okay. why PlayStation 5 has the feature set that it does. Mm. Now comes the fun part. We get to see how the development community takes advantage of that feature set. Okay. Oh. I'm hoping for the complete. Wait, unexpected. are we still ending? Will it come from audio, ray tracing? When he said, now comes the, the fun part, I'm like, are they going to show it? Or something else? I guess we'll find out soon enough. Thank you oh, for your time no. today. Oh, no. Oh no. What? What? Okay. All right. So this was kind of disappointing. You mean you don't mean to tell me that was it, right? <laughs> right? It's like a customized controller just ear controller. I think that's the case. Like their hmm ear videos on PS5 were free. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that was kind of disappointing. I was hoping that we'd at least get to see the PS5 or something like that or some kind of, I, okay, this is, that was disappointing. I'm not going to lie. That was disappointing. I'm not mad, just disappointed. Yeah, same thing. We sat through a whole free tech class. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm. I am disappointed. I It would have been better if they kind of, because it was kind of secretive. It's like, hey, uh, join us live tomorrow for a journey of PlayStation 5. It would have been better if they said, hey, it's going to be a very detailed, technical presentation about the very, of what our goals are, what our dreams are, and what our targets are. Because then we'd be prepared for it. It's technical. It's technical. But a lot of people, I'm sure, were expecting that the system was going to be shown or talk about games because as a consumer that's what you care about more right yes we get it they're gonna the graphics are gonna be better um i am really excited about the 3d audio thing though i really am so that's something that's cool that i wasn't i didn't think of before watching this but i like we care about what the games are gonna look like so when he was talking about all of those things it would have been great if we got to see that difference um the loading screens thing where he had like that screen that microsoft <laughs> 2000 uh, uh screen saver was kind of like i would have preferred something kind of like the spider-man thing that leaked where you got to see the difference in um i see liza koshi in you yeah i i was watching that uh that video it's a really good video but anyways i do wish that they showed more about the things that we cared about and i do wish that we got to see which games or see what they looked like see the loading screens experience that um this was disappointing hopefully they'll have more things they told us nothing yeah you seriously tell me that was it everybody's upset everybody's upset look at the face on the middle left side of the screen are you talking, are you talking about this face <laughs> this face my face is that the face you're talking about let me know this is, that, that is her reaction to thinking she was going to say that. <laughs> You're saying that that was, okay, that's hilarious. That was my face <laughs> thinking I was going to see the reveal today. Oh my, this or this one. Either of these faces are kind of like, oh, you thought you were going to see the reveal today? Well, that's not the case. Ay, ay, ay. That was... Was anybody happy about that? Did anybody feel like, man, I'm psyched right now? I know a lot of people are upset. I see you saying I'm I'm so mad. Just wasted a whole lifespan on this. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I've been primarily a PlayStation user as far as consoles go, and I have to say that I'm surprised and more satisfied with Xbox's transparency compared to Sony somehow. I will say that this one was less about the stuff we actually cared about. I mean, the 3D sound was awesome. And the whole breaking down and seeing that machine that they put people in was cool. And then them talking about the TV audio and how that it could sound like it's behind you. I want to test that. I really want to test that. But yeah, fever dream. That's essentially what this was, a technical fever dream, because it wasn't it wasn't even like talking about what they 
are going to do. It was, hey, these are our dreams. These are our targets. Not, hey, this is what the system is going to do. So I do kind of feel like this was like a fluff. Liza's happy and you need, you do need magic. What? What? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh my goodness. It wasn't just trash. I feel like I consented to it oh, for nothing. I got nothing out of this. I get you. No, I'm pleased with attending a free science class. I love, okay, I get it. I get it. No, I'm, I get the sarcasm there. Obviously, what I watched it for. Very disappointed. Yeah, I don't think anybody is um, is really happy about it. Have a good day. Yes. Thanks so much for coming through. I will say that if I was just watching this without you guys, it would have been like 10 million times more disappointing. I mean, this was disappointing. But watching with you guys, it was super freaking fun for me. You guys are horrible to be in a class with. All the things you were saying had me rolling and dying and laughing for most of this thing. So I enjoyed watching it with you, even though I'm sure you did not enjoy watching it, period. But thank you guys so much for coming through. I'm going to end the stream here. Um, if you're on Twitch, I'm going to raid um, our, our, a fellow Twitcher. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hug the life. Oh, like button. I love you guys as always. And until next time, buddies. Toodles.